As a GI doctor, I have several arch nemesis, and the most feared may be pancreatic cancer. In this video, let's discuss when surgery may beat this feared opponent. Pancreatic cancer is the fourth leading cause of cancer death. It is much less common than colon cancer, but so much more deadly. When we're discussing pancreatic cancer, we typically mean those tumors that arise from the exocrine gland of the pancreas, the ducts of the pancreas, that make the digestive enzymes that break down our food. This accounts for about 9 in 10 of all cancers that arise from the pancreas. A much less common group is neuroendocrine tumors. These involve the endocrine portion of the pancreas, and they are much less deadly. Steve Jobs had pancreatic cancer. He had the neuroendocrine tumor type. And that's why between when he was diagnosed until when he finally passed, he was able to continue to run Apple for a good number of years. So why is exocrine pancreatic cancer so deadly? It tends to not cause symptoms until fairly late in its course. It's not until the tumor starts to invade the nerves of the pancreas or block its ducts that a patient will start to notice that their skin is turning yellow or they're experiencing pain. The pain is often insidious. It onsets over a couple of months and it can feel at first not too different from a more bland gastritis. These tumors can grow aggressively and metastasize early. So by the time we start to see these symptoms, the tumor has already expanded into more distant lymph nodes and even spread into other organs like the liver. This makes it at a stage that is well beyond being surgically resected and cured. Additionally, peculiarities of the biochemistry of the tumor make it very effective at evading our immune system and resistant to our known chemotherapies, meaning we don't have a lot of offense against this foe. So why not just screen for pancreatic cancer to avoid the problem altogether? Well, first, pancreatic cancer is fairly uncommon, which is a good thing. In contrast, colon cancer is actually reasonably common, enough so that it makes sense to screen everybody at a certain age. Secondly, we don't have good predictors of who is at risk for pancreatic cancer as we do other types of cancer. People who smoke or people that have chronic liver disease are at risk of getting lung and liver cancers, and so we focus our screening efforts on those people who are at high risk. Research from major academic centers has indicated that strong family history is a reason to recommend that select groups of people screen for pancreatic cancer with an MRI but this is a very narrow segment of the population and captures only a small portion of people who are ultimately at risk of developing this feared cancer. So we don't have a good method to apply to the general population and identify those at risk early. And the next problem that we have is that when we find something, we have to just continue to watch it with screening and then eventually consider a surgery, pretty extreme method to try to prevent this cancer. In contrast with a colonoscopy, if I come across a polyp, I can easily remove it right there during the same procedure. And it's quite simple and straightforward. So when a pancreatic cancer is suspected, then the most effective way to diagnose it and to stage it is with a detailed CT of the abdomen and pelvis that uses contrast to enhance the lesions. This can give a lot of information, not only about a growth within the pancreas, but about lymph node involvement and even spread to some of the other major organs of the abdomen. Pancreatic cancer can potentially be cured when the disease remains local to the pancreas and has not extended too far out. We want to see that any lymph node involvement are only on those neighboring the immediate pancreas because we can get all of those within a surgery. But if a CT shows that there's a growth in the liver, then the next step would be to biopsy that liver growth because this would show us that this is both a pancreatic cancer primary and confirm the staging that this is metastasized to the liver. This is a disease no longer curable by surgery. If imaging shows that there are lymph nodes that are further afield from the pancreas, closer to the liver, then then again, we cannot probably cure this with surgery. Additionally, if we see that there is involvement of major blood vessels of the abdomen this is something which will complicate any surgery. So if we start to see the tumor encases a major artery, then surgery is no longer an option. And if we see that it starts to obliterate one of the major veins, so much so that we could not surgically reconstruct that vein, then again, it takes surgery away as an option. In recent years, cancer surgeons have become more adventurous on those tumors that they will try to remove and repair venous structures. 
a GI doctor may perform an endoscopic ultrasound during the workup and staging ahead of surgery to scope out the area and better plan our attack. Importantly, tissue can be biopsied from the pancreas, which can give a confirmation of the diagnosis and can also be used to do specialized testing to pinpoint the best chemotherapies to use against this disease. While in some instances, an endoscopic ultrasound can also change the staging of the disease and influence how we look at vascular structures and the relationships of the tumor with them, very often the CT that has already been performed provides such crisp images that we can get plenty of information to plan whether surgery is the most appropriate option. Of the leading cancer killers, pancreas cancer may be the one that we most remain at a disadvantage to screen and treat. But in future videos, we're going to discuss some of the progress that's being made to combat this foe. Thank you for watching and be safe.